Hey there, Wastelanders, and welcome back to War Games News Radio for this very special first ever All Star Battle Report. This is going to mark the end of the season one of the Battle Report Breakdown series, and I've taken all of the All Stars that you folks have voted for throughout this series, and I'm pitting them in a custom scenario against one really nasty Deathclaw Matriarch. Now, the Deathclaw Matriarch is one of the few legendary creatures available in Fallout Wasteland Warfare, and you can get your hands on this card or cards in the Denizens of the Wasteland deck. Check out some of the links down below if you want to pick up this card expansion pack. I'm going to be playing a custom scenario I designed called Deathclaw Carnage. It's a quick and dirty one played in four rounds, and it's more of an objective-based scenario than a straight-up fight. In fact, there's a good chance if you're playing this against someone, you might not actually get any shots in at all, depending on how you want to play it. If you want to get your hands on this scenario, then head on over to the WGNR Discord server. We've got lots of resources there, some custom scenarios, and we've even started a cool little hobby crafting collective called the WGNR Hobby League. It's less of a contest and more of a like-minded collective of crafters, so if you're into painting models or building terrain, that might be the place for you. As if all that weren't enough, we're doing a giveaway this episode to celebrate hitting the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. So I've put together a WGNR prize pack for one lucky viewer. In that pack is a WGNR t-shirt, not unlike the one I'm currently wearing, a cool and swanky WGNR mug for you to put your Java or your dirty paint water in, and we've got a mini that we're giving away as well. It's a Fallout Wasteland Warfare NCR Ranger Mini. This is a super fun one, and if you're a big fan of New Vegas, like I know a lot of folks are, then you're going to want to get your hands on this prize pack. All you have to do is be a subscriber to WGNR and leave a comment in the description down below. Below. It can be anything. You can just say hi, you can tell us what you think of the video or the channel so far. Just leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and you could win a WGNR prize pack. Now, if you want to double your chances to win, consider going over to the WGNR Patreon page and joining our patron community. You can get all kinds of exclusive rewards there and even become a named character in a future WGNR video. Any support you want to throw our way means that I can make more videos more often for you folks to enjoy. With all of that housekeeping out of the way, let's get back to business in the Fallout Season 1 All-Star Battle Report Breakdown, Deathclaw Carnage. Let's get into the action. And here is the map for Deathclaw Carnage, starring the Fallout Wasteland Warfare Battle Report Season 1 All-Stars versus one very angry Deathclaw Matriarch, who just so happens to be a legendary unit. I will have six rounds to attempt to destroy as many of the Deathclaw nests as I can which you can see there, right down the middle of the board. Each nest has five hit points and has both one physical and energy armor, and they are immune to rads. The Deathclaw will be trying to destroy the supply crates, which can be found in each of the four quadrants of the board. Whenever one of my units makes an attack on one of the nests, the Deathclaw will change its priority to attack the model which last attacked a nest. So this could be a great way for me to either distract the Deathclaw from its objective or perhaps to unintentionally uh, get some attention brought upon myself. The crates each have four hit points and one strong armor for both physical and energy resistances, but they do not have a base armor value. So they won't require an armor roll, but they'll always stop at least one damage unless uh, some sort of special roll prevents them from doing otherwise. My models can also interact with the supply crates, and once per battle round, any one of my models may spend a free action to generate an item from the supply crate and pull it from the wasteland deck. Now each crate can only be activated like this once per battle round. There's one more special rule in this scenario, and that is the Deathclaw warning system. If I am able to perform a successful hack use expertise skill test on the terminal inside the control shack here, then an alarm will sound, which will automatically put one stun onto the Deathclaw. There are also four radioactive zones on the board, so I need to be mindful of those as I'm making my way 
around. But uh, yeah, a couple special rules in play. So interested to see how this is going to shake down. And here are the All-Stars. First up, we have the Tesla Soldier, who has his Enclave power armor, free Tesla coils, and a tire iron. The Legionary Scout with a hunting rifle. Dog Meat, ever-loving dog meat with his ever-loving dog meat bite. And Jefferson, the Mr. Handy, who has a Mr. Handy buzzsaw, as well as a Mr. Handy flamer. Giving us the stare down is the Deathclaw Matriarch. She is a legendary unit with two unit cards, meaning I have to defeat both if I am to defeat her. She has an entire litany of different special Deathclaw weapons as well as some pretty cool perks and boosts. So I'll just go over them as they come up because there's way too much to go over for just this one model. But she comes in at a terrifying 390 caps, which is an exact match for my 390 caps of all stars. The stage is set for our first All-Star Showdown, so let's get into the action on Deathclaw Carnage. Alrighty, as per deployment, I am on two opposite board edges from the Deathclaw Matriarch, who randomly spawned on the far right board edge there. So uh, it is her turn to go first, so let's go ahead and activate her AI. The Matriarch got the attack action, and uh, she's going to attack nearest, which in this case is the crate. So she's going to charge and attack. Matriarch swipe hitting on fives. Ooh, that is a hit with a quick action, two armor break, uh, and a stun and an extra damage. So that's going to be a three damage total, dealing two damage. Right off the bat, not so great. Could have been better, could have been worse. But it's time to activate one of my troops, and I think I'm going to get someone in the mix. The goodest boy, dog meat. Double moved dog meat to get him in position to do some uh, distraction maneuvers with the matriarch next turn. I'm going to try and see if I can't get some goods to even the score here. Move my Tesla Trooper twice and then make a free draw from the Wasteland deck. Drawing from the Wasteland deck, I got... Oh, Gauze Rifle, that's pretty slick. Uh, this is a primed weapon. It deals three base damage standard uh, and can do additional damage on uh, being charged. And also forgive my damage screen here. Uh, I took this thing took a tumble, and uh, yeah, but I still need it for uh, for making these videos. So there you go. Um, using a broken screen, don't judge. Okay, well you just got yourself a weapon upgrade, Mr. Tesla Soldier. But uh, let's go ahead and move these two in position. Jefferson is actually going to make a play for the computer terminal here. See if we can't give the Deathclaw a more difficult time. Whereas the scout here is actually just going to put two shots into this nearest Deathclaw nest. Scout hitting on sevens. That is a hit with a quick action and one armor break, so that's gonna do two damage. Second shot. That's a hit, okay, for three damage, uh, that's gonna do it. And after a couple crack shots, the scout is able to take out our first nest, not too shabby. With everybody gone, that is the end of round one. We've got one less nest over there, thanks to the scout. Jefferson is making a play for the Deathclaw stunning computer. We've got a brand new shiny Gauss rifle over here, and then Dogmeat's getting ready to do what Dogmeat does. So yeah, this uh, matriarch is putting us through our paces already. Let's uh, see what happens in round two. Event deck is Black Mountain Radio. Yeah, it's an angel for radio for the Utahwethon. Bring two to the Utahwethons 24 hours a day. Welcome. Well, the Deathclaw got the fallback option, but I don't really think that makes a whole heck of a lot of sense given the current situation that they're in, unless maybe they're getting terrified by these folks here. So I'm going to roll a luck die. Uh, on the luck die, the Matriarch's going to attack unlucky and fall back if I'm lucky. Let's let the fates decide what the Deathclaw Matriarch does. hoo -ah! After letting out a terrifying bork, Dogmeat has scared the Deathclaw Matriarch into falling back, and then she will prepare. Let's see if old Jefferson might not be able to put the stun on the Matriarch, so we'll get Jefferson to move once to being uh, interacting with the computer there and uh, make a intelligence check. Jefferson hacking on a seven. Hey, that's gonna do it. Seven. The luckiest robot continues his luckiest robot streak, and we get a stun put on the matriarch. 
I'm going to move the Tesla soldier up once, priming a shot on his Gauss rifle, and then I'm going to take a shot at this nest. Tesla soldier, Gauss rifle primed, four base damage, hitting on a five. Ah, uh, that's a miss. Dogmeat's gonna go ahead and charge into this nest here and make an attack, hopefully contesting this whole situation from the Deathclaw over there. Dogmeat, Dogmite, hitting on sixes, extra black die for the charge. So that's just going to do all three damage straight through to the nest. Good job, goodest boy. It's time now to get our scout moving up the board. The scout is going to end their activation within yellow of this radiation hazard here. So we're gonna have to make a roll uh, and see if they are able to survive that. Radiation roll, any damage done is rad damage to the scout. No, uh, yes, yeah, able to survive that one. End of round two and we're looking in good shape. We might be the first ones to the punch here. Uh, that uh, activation by Jefferson really came in handy, but uh, let's see what we're able to do going into round three. Event for round three is damp air. The moist air keeps the dust down. Any blank face on a green die treated as minus one. Uh, there is no blank face on a green die. This is a bit of a weird thing that popped up uh, in the New Vegas expansion, but uh, this is basically treated as a minus a two when you see the minus one. It's a weird rule, still looking for an errata to really clear this up. It's a bit strange. Deathclaw Matriarch got the charge and she's easily going to be able to make it. She shakes off her stun and charges into Dogmeat. Instead of going for the stun, Jefferson's going to attack the uh, eggs in here. Mr. Handy Buzzsaw hitting on fives. That is a hit for one armor break, so going to deal two damage right off the bat. Uh, then going to go ahead and do the same thing one more time. And that's a miss. Dogmeat sees the opportunity to finish the job on these eggs, so uh, he's going to attack. Dogmeat hitting on sixes. That is a hit with a quick action dually armor break. So that's gonna finish off the, um, the hen nest. Dogmeat removes one of the nests. With his second attack, he'll go after the Deathclaw. Attacking the Deathclaw, hitting on sixes. Uh, nope, that's not gonna do it. We're gonna go ahead and pump two Gauss rifle shots into the Deathclaw. Three damage on six armor. Looking for a four. Okay, stops one, takes two. I forgot to randomize who that hit. Let's see if I actually hit Dogmeat instead. Uh, yeah, I hit Dogmeat. I hit dog meat. Second shot, also hitting on fives. That's a miss. Whoops, sorry boy. Dog meat got hit. Unfriendly fire. Legion Scout's going to move once to get an open shot, and then also shoot at the melee here. Scout normally hitting on sevens, hitting on nines for shooting into the melee. Yeah, that's a hit for two armor break. Let's see who we hit. One and three is the matriarch, two and four is dog meat. That's the matriarch. Sorry, two damage on four armor. Oh gosh, okay, stops all of it. Going into the final round and it is anyone's game. We currently have two points to the death clause zero, but if they're able to take out this crate, which uh, is on its last legs in this final turn, then it was, might be a tie game. Of course, Jefferson could turn the tide uh, if he's able to get that last egg sack down. So yeah, could go either way. Uh, it's gonna be short and sweet in this fight to the finish. Let's get into the final round. Oh geez, last event card is Blasts of Wind. When an unengaged normal size model activates, test strength, and uh, if on a fail, then they will scatter orange. So this isn't going to apply to the Deathclaw, but it will apply to all of my crew, uh, save I guess probably Jefferson, who's inside a building at the moment. Okay, Deathclaw's turn, and it's going to abandon the attack on dog meat and go for the crate. So yeah, let's roll this and see what happens. Matriarch swipe hitting on fives. So that's a hit for two damage. The crate has a natural plus one armor, so it's going to be just enough to destroy the crate and take it out, tying the game. The matriarch evens the score, making it a two-two game, meaning that really, it all comes down to Jefferson. Jefferson's gonna go ahead and use his Mr. Handy Buzzsaw to try and take out the last egg sack. If he is able to do so, then he's going to get the third point required to win this scenario. Mr. Handy Buzzsaw hitting on fives for the win. 
That is a hit for one armor break, doing two damage. That's going to leave one damage left on the egg sac. This is for all the marbles, hitting on a five. That does it, Jefferson. Jefferson, you are the man. That makes two battle reports in a row where Jefferson has come out with the win and is able to destroy the last of the three Deathclaw Matriarch egg sacks. This area is now free from any Deathclaw presence and our all-stars have made the grade once again, proving why they are the best of the best of season one. That was a close one for the all-stars. Only one point made the difference, but they were able to squeak out a win against that Deathclaw Matriarch. That's gonna be a wrap on season one of the Battle Report Breakdown series, but never fear because there is a new narrative Battle Report campaign coming out very soon. We're gonna be going back to the Mojave and play through the five linked scenarios in the new Vegas Wave campaign, which was released a few months ago. I'm super excited to get down and dirty with more of these NCR and Legion units, and this is no doubt going to be a pretty action-packed campaign. Don't forget, we've got the 1,000 subscriber giveaway on the go, so make sure you're subscribed to WGNR and leave a comment down below to qualify for that prize pack. You can get one of these t-shirts, a mug, and an NCR Ranger Mini, which I'm super excited to give away. And if you really want to increase your chance to win and show your love to WGNR, then consider becoming a member of our Patreon community. You can also get your hands on some of this merchandise by visiting our Streamlabs page. But of course, if you want to get it for free, then all you have to do is enter the giveaway. And to get personal for just a quick second, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who've watched a video, subscribed, joined us on Instagram, become part of the Hobby League on Discord, however you're showing your love to this channel, it, it means the world to me that you've all gotten behind this little pandemic passion project that I started just over a year ago now. I never thought it would get this big and I never thought anyone would really care. So if you're enjoying the Wasteland Warfare content, the 2D20 content, we've got lots more coming through year two of WGNR. So from the bottom of my Fallout heart, thank you so, so much. We're just getting started, folks. So thank you so much for taking part in this journey and stay tuned because WGNR will be back.